Now that we know our way around the Flash environment, we're ready to start constructing our website. We've got a pretty good handle on how to make vector shapes with the tool set, but our site's going to need a lot more content than that, like bitmap pictures or text. In this chapter, we're going to take a look at how to bring those types of items into your movie and how to work with them on the stage. So let's get to work on that site. If you're working through the chapters in order, I actually encourage you to keep working with the document you used in the last chapter. But if you're starting fresh like me, you can open up the Flash Site 2 start file. You'll find that in the Chapter 2 folder. And I'm just going to save this right off the bat. I'll choose Save As. I'll go out to our Project File folder. And I'm going to go to the Flash Website folder. And I'll just either overwrite or save my file as Flash Site Flaw. I'm just going to click Replace on that for mine. And we're ready to start working. Now the first thing I want to do in this chapter is experiment a little bit with layers. We always start out a new file with layer 1. But it's a really good idea to immediately name your layers, and that way you can keep your content managed and organized. I'm going to double click on the name of this layer, and as soon as it becomes editable, I'm going to change that layer name to Content Panel. And we're just going to draw in a background panel that we can use to host some of the content that's going to be in our website. I'll hit Enter. And if you want to, you can pull this area out just a little bit so that you can see your names a little bit more clearly. Now, let me zoom out on my stage. I'll use Command minus, and of course that's Control minus on the PC. And for our panel, we're just going to use a dark rectangle. So I'm going to choose my rectangle tool. I'm going to set the fill color to a black. And I don't really want a stroke on this one, so I'm going to click on the stroke color, and you can choose the slash up here at the top, and that'll make it so that it won't draw a stroke at all. I'll just drag out a rectangle, and we've got our content panel set up. As we saw in the earlier chapter, you can actually put as many things as you want to in a single layer. But it's a good idea to start organizing your content and making layers for each item. We can do a lot with layers, like for instance, we can use these two icons here to be able to hide a layer. I'll just click underneath the eyeball, or show layer. And if you've finished items in a layer, you can lock it, and that'll keep you from being able to select it or draw new content into it, so you won't mess it up if you've already got it finished. I'll unlock that layer, and let's try one other tool for arranging items on our stage. I'm going to go over to my selection tool, and I'm going to select that content panel that we drew. And if I want this aligned perfectly with the right edge of the stage, I can use the Align panel. One click, and that brings my panel out, and we've got lots of different align settings. Now, normally you're using these settings to align one object to another object on the stage, but we have this two-stage option on the side. If that's turned on, it will actually take whatever you've selected and align it to the stage using the control. So if I want this item right aligned to the right edge of my stage, I can just click on the Right Align tool, and now I've got it perfectly lined up with the right edge. What's also nice is the way these fly-out panels work, they basically stay out until you're done with them, and you can signal that by just clicking anywhere on the screen or grabbing another tool. I'll just click here on the stage, and you can see that that panel closes itself and gets itself out of the way so it's not taking up a lot of our screen space.